Welcome back to New Hope Tarot, where we will be doing your reading for the Let Go and Grow Pick a Pile. In this reading, we'll focus on what can be let go of and spotlight what requires strengthening for optimal growth. I'll meet you at the pile you've picked. Hello, pile number one. You have picked the Red Agate Stone. The red agate stone is associated with the root chakra and it helps to keep you grounded. All right. It also allows you to overcome fears. So let's take a look at your cards and see what we have. All right. We have the three of swords, the high priestess, the magician. and the Ace of Wands. Okay, so before I even get into the reading, I'm gonna point out that something is definitely holding you back from something that is meant to happen for you. And the reason why I have this here, and this is your soul mission or soul person, I don't know, uh, without looking deeper, but we have several, uh, numeral ones here. We have the three of swords, which typically has the number three. Uh, here we have the Roman numeral three, the high priestess. It's the Roman numeral two, the magician Roman numeral one. And then we have the ace of wands that actually looks like a one. So I'm seeing a lot of ones. And the wands represent new new beginnings. They also represent self-sufficiency, um, independence, confidence. So that's, that's everything that it encompasses. Uh, but for you specifically, it's about new beginnings. And the reason why that is, is because we, we have your car your not your card your reading ending in the ace of wands which means that i feel like something is this three of swords situation is preventing you from the ace of wands situation which is a new beginning all right so let's go ahead and dive in to your particular uh, reading here pile number one so with the three of swords here what i'm getting is that whatever sadness or heartbreak has consumed you or is consuming you um, is blocking, it's blocking you from seeing the truth. Whatever it is, it's not allowing you to think straight. It, it It's keeping you confused. It's, it's it's like you're almost going through the motions, but not really getting anything out of it. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it's preventing you from being the strong individual that you are, which all of these ones are making perfect sense now. Um, and so does the red agate because the red agate is to allow you from moving forward from fears to overcome fears to um, to ground you to ground you and and allow you to see things for what they are yeah and the high priestess here Yeah, it, you are very intuitive. You really are. You really are. But right now, you're not able to tap into your intuition. You're not able to tap into the truth because whatever this three of swords situation you have going on, it's, I don't, I don't know what the situation was uh, or 
who this person is or what occurred. I don't know. It could be a situation. It could be a person. I don't know. But whatever it is, it's preventing you from moving forward and tapping into your the truth of the situation and your natural intuitive self because I do see that you are incredibly intuitive but for whatever reason this person or the situation has got you completely blinded um hmm and for somebody out there I don't know who this is for if this is someone in your life they're holding you down preventing you from growing it's like they don't believe they can do what you are capable of. So therefore, they're kind of holding you back so that you don't leave them in the dust. I, I, I hope that makes sense to somebody. I'm sure that resonates with somebody. If it does, please comment. Um, because that's, that's what I'm getting here. With the magician here and the ace of wands, I feel... What needs to grow is your creativity. You have, you are capable of creating everything. You help, you have all the right resources, but all the right resources are just sitting there dull because this situation is, is not allowing you to sharpen them. And what needs to happen is that you need to, well, Again, I know I say you need to. You, you can do whatever it is you want, pound number one. But you obviously came to the reading for a reason. Um, but what this card is asking you to do is sharpen all of your resources. You are creative. You are able to, you are able to communicate clearly. You're able to focus. You're able to tap it into your intuition. You're able to make a lot of money. You have the makings of someone that can be incredibly prosperous, very, um, I feel like you can own your own business. You can do whatever you really set your mind to with this magician person here, but none of your tools are being sharpened. It's like you were sharp at one point and you knew you were, and then you came into this situation, this three of swords situation and all of your senses have been dulled. That's what I'm getting here for you guys. And the reality is, is that you are a magnificent person. I mean, you are quite freaking powerful. My dear pal, number one, your creativity and willpower needs to grow to allow inspiration to breathe passion back into the things you enjoy because a new and happier beginning is for sure waiting for you to walk right through its doors. That's what I'm getting here for you. I'm gonna um, get some clarifiers to see if there's any additional information that we can get here, specifically with this Three of Swords um, situation that we have. And then I'm also going to get a clarifier for the Ace of Wands. I want to see what's going on here. But for right now, I want the clarifier for this Three of Swords. There it is. Yeah. There it is. The Seven of Swords. Someone is, <laughs> they're absolutely undermining you. They are, wow, I can't even, I can't even with this person. They are somebody that I feel lies and it, it I, I don't, I, I feel like this person is so good at playing chess. Uh, not actual chess, but I mean, maybe they are. I don't know. But like 
they put all the right pieces in certain spots to kind of make you feel like you've lost your mind. I feel like they're dishonest. I feel like this, and this could be a a work situation. It could be a friend. It could be a, a relationship. I don't know. But I feel like what this person has done is really, I feel like they've stolen your, not your identity as far as your, you know, like your ID, not that, but they've stolen who you are. And once you leave this person, it's like, I feel like you're going to have to not necessarily recreate yourself, but refine yourself, like get reacquainted with your true authentic self. Because I feel like this person has really done a number on you. Uh, my dear ones. Yeah. You, you definitely need to get away from whatever this three of swords situation is. Yeah. And right now you have the sun in reverse, which is, um, a lack of enthusiasm. It's, you're being oppressed. It's like you, I feel like you think that this person keeps going back and forth. It's like they, they do something and then they make you feel like, no, they really didn't do that. Even, even though you know the truth, you're like, they, they just kind of go, no, 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 I didn't do that. No, you're, you're crazy. That's not what happened. No, that's, that's not what happened. Don't get, don't get crazy on me. Don't be jealous. Don't do this. Don't do that. I feel like when you try to call them out, they flat out lie. And then they say, no, it's this, and then throw it back on you. And they absolutely deflect. That's, that's what I'm getting here. And when they do that, you have this, this sense of, oh, it's me. It's, it's not them. Oh my gosh, it's me. Because they're telling you it's you, but it's not you. It's them. That's, that's what I'm getting here. Pile number one. Wow. So I was just going to pull a card for the Ace of Wands, but the Spirit wants me to go ahead and get clarification for all the cards. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Here's the funny part. The uh, Seven of Swords is a moon card. And I feel like that's what they're stealing. You're, they're stealing your moon because in the High Priestess here, uh, we have the same crescent moon that's showing that I see when I see the um, the seven of swords. And the seven of swords isn't necessarily a bad card. It's actually, it can be a really good card. But in this particular instance, it's not great for you. Like, it, I don't feel like it's great for you. All right. And the sun card, um, it these two cards... So the it, the seven of swords is the moon card, and I feel like they're stealing your intuition, like your strength. That's your your strength is your gut instincts. You have a natural ability of just going with your with your gut instincts, and they're good. But right now you are so upside down, and you question everything that you doubt yourself thoroughly. Okay, the sun card. Is obviously that the sun that uh, is obviously a, a it's the opposite of the moon. So you, the two of you are, are so completely opposite, and yet they both have to do with the solar plexus chakra. They are stealing this ability from you. They are depleting you, my dear ones. All right, with the magician, you have the empress card. I mean, seriously. I'm telling you, you're creative, you're beautiful. You you are a very harmonious person. You have this natural ability that the people just like you naturally. But right now that's not the energy that that you're that that you're in. It, you feel so I feel like you you have this 
this, you're just so, you're full of doubt. You're, you're self-conscious. You, you, whatever, whatever confidence you had previously before this situation, it's been depleted. I, I see that you are a person that likes beautiful things. I'm not saying expensive things, just beautiful things. You find beauty in pretty much anything. You can create anything and make it beautiful. Uh, you like art, you, you like nature, you like, I don't, I don't know. There's just something about you that's so incredibly graceful. And this person has really dulled you. You also, uh, you're very witty. You're, you have this sense of humor and this brightness, this glow about you that this person was initially attracted to. And then whatever, whatever it occurred, it's you, they've taken you, they've taken you away from that glow. They've taken that glow away from you. And with the Ace of Wands, we have the Strength card. You need to find your inner strength. You need to find your inner courage. That's exactly what we were just talking about. You need to overcome your self-doubt. Everything we literally just spoke about. And I'll tell you why. The moment, the moment you come into your power again, new beginnings are waiting for you. I'm telling you, everything you imagine at one point, whatever you feel like you can create and manifest, you're capable of doing it. That's how powerful you are, my dear ones. Like, really, that's how powerful you are. Let me just tell you, we have one, two, we have eight cards, right? Eight cards. One, two, three, four, five. Five of the eight are major arcanas. I've used two different decks. I shuffled. And you have four. No, wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Just kidding. Five. Five major arcanas here. So if you are still in this situation, please let go of it. Please let go of this situation. I feel like most of you have already moved on and are trying to work on yourselves. But I still feel like there are some that are still within the situation and, and feel blocked. Okay? So please let go of the situation. Grow in your strength. Grow in your creativity. Go do things that sharpen your tools. Because in the magician, usually in the magician, all the the magician, it, the person is kind of creating with all of all of the the resources, right? All the uh, all the resources that they have, you know, the cup, the the sword, the wand, the pinnacle. They're creating, right? In this particular card, all of the resources are on the table. None of them are being touched or being worked by the actual magician. And in this particular card, we have a dragonfly as well on top of the, uh, on, on, uh, on top of the, uh, the magician's head. And it, it really gives me the, the sense of the high priestess. It looks very similar to the high priestess in, in, in a di the other deck that uh, that I'm using, so I'm using two different decks. And in the deck um, that I'm using, in this particular deck, the high priestess it looks like she's floating, and with her arms out, and and she looks very similar to this particular dragonfly, and it's like spirit wants is trying to communicate with you, but you're blocked because of what's happening. And I do feel like you're getting some downloads, but you're not getting the full download or the full comprehension of what they mean because of whatever is happening. That's, that's what I'm seeing here. 
uh, one, two, three, three. We have three cards, three cards that are for the, that state that you need to please focus on your solar plexus chakra. So please focus on your solar plexus chakra and please focus on your root chakra to remain strong. I would highly recommend going to a local crystal store and purchase a red agate because the red agate, again, is about strength. That was your final card, the strength card, um, because we want to make sure that you stay grounded so that you're able to overcome your fears, your fears of moving forward uh, from the situation and, and possibly can, thinking that you don't have the ability to do so, that you're not strong enough to do so, not strong enough to create your own path. And believe me, my dear friend, you're the high priestess, you're the magician, you're the empress. You are able. You are more, more than capable Gather your strength, my dear pal number one. Gather your strength. You've got this. All right, my dear ones, until we meet again. Bye. Hello, pal number two. You have picked the lapis lazuli. This particular um, stone has to do with the third eye chakra. This stone raises your self-awareness and helps navigate you towards your life's purpose. Um, I'm taking a look at the stone. Spirit has actually guided me to look at the stone. And what I'm seeing in this particular stone is that you have layers and la what they're showing me is that you have layers and layers on top of your heart at this moment keeping you I, I I feel like you're protecting your heart is what I'm getting at you're protecting yourself you're you I, I'm getting the sense that you are oh wow by doing this you are keeping yourself from your destiny my dear pal number two also the, uh, the, in this particular stone there is glitters of uh, gold and spirit is guiding me to let you know that you have all of these possibilities around you. No, it's not perfect. Your life is not perfect. Your life will never be perfect is what they're telling me. But you have so much, so much possibilities In, in the, oh, wow. So what spirit is telling me right now, thank you, my spirits. Let me go ahead and put the stone down. What spirit is telling me is that, they, or what they're showing me rather, is that, okay, thank you, my spirits. So they're showing me and they're telling me that if you pay attention you'll see the magic around you. That's what they're telling me. It's like a, a, a pixie dust. Thank you. It's pixie dust. Um, it, you know, like kids see pixie dust, but adults don't. I feel like at one point in time, you believed in magic. But for whatever reason, you no longer believe in magic or or it's so deep down that maybe because of past mistakes, past errors, I don't, I don't know, um, whatever that looked like for you in your childhood or, you know, as a young adult, I, I, I don't know your age. I don't know anything about you, but I feel like 
at one point you believed in magic and then life happened and it has prevented you from, from seeing more, from wanting more, for, from doing more. Um, because I feel like you, you're just scared now. That's, that's what I'm seeing. And that's just from the stone. That's the first time spirit has ever asked me to look at a stone that deeply. So there's that. Now let's look at your cards. All right. The page of wands in reverse. Interesting. Okay. Uh, thank you, spirit. The wheel of fortune the tower in reverse and the emperor in reverse you have three major arcanas in four cards or yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> that's amazing okay so before i even get into the card spirit asked me to look at the page of wands and they pointed out these um ladybugs that are floating or they're not floating they're flying um and, and what they're showing me is exactly what I just said with the lapis lazuli. At one point, you believed in magic, in fairies, and in, in, in magical things. And it's like you no longer believe in that. They, they asked me to point that out because they want me to tell you that that magic does exist and it's still there. All right, now let's, yeah, you're more afraid of, of mistakes. That's, that's what's happening here. You're, you're afraid of making a mistake and looking foolish is what I'm getting. And I believe I said that in the lapis lazuli. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and and talk about what needs to go. And I feel like right now what needs to go is the negative talk. Whether this is the negative self-talk coming from yourself or negative self-talk that from somebody around you, you know, friends, family, a loved one, you know, a partner, whatever, or negative talk that was taught to you at a young age, you know, or maybe a teacher that you had that said, no, you don't have the, the ability to do whatever it is you want to do. You're not good at it or whatever. And that now resonates in your head. That's what I'm seeing here. I'm sorry. Spirit is really communicating very strongly in your particular reading. And I get very dry mouth when that happens. So I, I needed to drink some water. I apologize. So I, I feel like for the majority of you, this is not necessarily somebody around you, although it can be for some instances, but for the majority, I feel like this is past words that are still resonating in your own mind and you're repeating it over and over and over again. And this negative self-talk is keeping you from making decisions to move forward and taking a chance, a chance to do something that, you know, maybe it could be perceived as scary, right? Specifically because you don't want to, you don't want to fail. Thank you, my angels. The, um, they're telling me meditate. Meditate. That's that. Uh, uh, and, and they didn't even say the word meditate. They, they said, um, that's what they said. <laughs> so meditate. Just, yeah. They're, they're telling me meditate. Meditate is nowhere on the cards, but that's what they're telling me. Um. <sighs> Yeah, that's that's what I'm seeing here, my dear Paul number two. You you're being stalled. You, that and that's why all this negative talk needs to go away because you need to move forward. It needs 
it needs to go. This, this negative self-talk needs to go because it's preventing you from making decisions to move forward, taking a chance, taking a chance in life, doing something more. That's what I'm seeing here. Maybe you don't know what that more is. And maybe that's what's preventing you. Maybe you don't know what your life purpose is because we do have the lapis lazuli, which is, you know, it it allows you to help with your life's purpose. Maybe maybe that's part of the issue here. But you're not going to find your life purpose with negative talk. You know, so you have to get rid of whomever's buzzing around you, um, whatever words. And again, this could have been something that happened ages ago, but it's still resonating in your mind. They keep telling me the word resonating. It's like it's echoing and, and your mind is an echo chamber. It just keeps going and going and going. You have to let go of that, my dear pal number two. All right. All right. What needs to grow? Change. Change. Taking chances. That's what needs to grow. Here, um, accepting, accepting, (laughs) accepting. See, look, there is a mistake right there. That's so funny. Accepting that mistakes will happen. And with mistakes come growth. Understanding that mistakes cannot always be avoided. I mean, that's just, that's just life. You know, mistakes cannot always be avoided and that is totally fine. Understand that even though mistakes can't be avoided, you, they can be learned from. But no change at all will not equal growth. You can't grow without making a mistake. Period. You know, it, you have to, even companies and businesses that have been around for a long time, they have to change up their strategy in order to grow. They can't do the same thing in and out. In, they, they can't. You know, it might look similar, but there's little changes, right? Because that is how growth occurs. And, you know, and Spirit just pointed out, make little changes. Make little changes. That's what needs to to start happening. Little changes. And why little changes? Because allowing change and mistakes to happen will allow you to learn to not be so much in control. That it's okay to be out of control every once in a while. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. And not necessarily out of control. Like, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. You know, it's, you know, sporadic and and, and nuts. Not like that. But not having the rigidity of, oh no, no, it has to go this way. And letting go of the mentality of perfection Because once we let go of control, we do learn to see beauties and things that are flawed, things that are imperfect, right? If you look at a rose, roses aren't perfect. They're not always, they're they're just not. They have thorns, you know, the the, um, petals might be falling off a little bit. It might be a little burnt on the side, like they, how they get a little dark and but they're still beautiful, they still smell beautiful, and they are still considered the most romantic flower, right? And yet they have thorns. Nothing is perfect. Allow these things to change. Allow the changes so that you can make mistakes and break out of that box that that you're currently in believe in magic again my dear pal number two believe in magic let's get some clarifiers here and um find out what we got going on for you guys okay this one all right yeah two of swords 
it, 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 I feel like you're just so stressed about making decisions. Look at this. And the page of cups in reverse. These are um, broken dreams. <laughs> you know? And the... What do we have here? That is the... What is that? Three of cups in reverse. Sorry, I have a hard time seeing... All of your cards, by the way, are in reverse except for two. This tells me that you're not in tune with herself, which makes sense that the lapis lazuli is here because this has to do with your third eye chakra. You need to reopen um, and see, see with your inner eye. And I, as I say that, spirit points out to me that the in the two of swords, the person is... Um, blinded right they have a blindfold over their eyes and the reality is is that they can put down these swords and take off the blindfold fold you know you're able to take the blindfold off however you you're just so afraid of facing your fears that it's it's like you're you're stuck is what i'm seeing here and I feel like you've been at this crossroads for a while, my dear one. As a matter of fact, this, um, this two of swords has to do with your third eye chakra. Just so, and so does the three of cups. The three of cups also has to do with the third eye chakra. So maybe you need a lapis lazuli. Go to your local um, crystal shop and try to get a lapis lazuli. Uh, just to keep with you. Um, honestly, I would even get a... Normally, I just tell you to get, uh, grab a small one. But in your instance, because I'm feeling like you're very stuck, I would get a big one and try to keep it uh, at your bedside. Uh, and when I say big, not not ginormous. I, I mean maybe the size of your palm or just smaller than that, okay? I'm, I'm not talking about ginormous. You don't need a huge one. Um, with the page of cups in reverse, I feel like this is something that, again, I said, it, this is, this is, might have had something to do, uh, have occurred a while ago. Uh, so I feel like this is something that occurred when you were younger. Um, I feel like either someone broke your dreams or shattered your dreams, shattered, uh, like they, they took all of your, I, wow. Um, I feel like they took, the, the spirit just showed me uh, the, the page of cups and, and in this particular page of cup, it's the um, uh, Rider way uh, tarot. The, the, the person is holding the cup, but it, they, and it, because it's in reverse, it looks like he's strangling the cup and that's what spirit just showed me it's like they they strangled the life out of your dreams and they did this with with words and because of that you're 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 no longer planning for a future because you're so stuck that's what i'm seeing here with the three of cups here, I, I feel like, thank you, my angel spirits. Okay, so what I'm getting here, hmm, with this three of cups, and I wanna say this as gently as I possibly can, which is why I, I sawed for a moment I, f I feel like you are, and please don't shoot the messengers, my, my the messenger uh, pal number two. I feel like you are a little bitter. Uh, and, and I don't, I, again, I don't mean that to be hurtful. I've been, I've been hurt by somebody and I've been bitter towards the person for a while. You know, so I understand this, but I feel like this bitterness, like I feel like 
you know that they put in all of this self-doubt in you and that you had so much potential and it's like you're angry with this person and all you know or anybody that told you that you weren't good enough and I, I just feel like you're that, that's what I'm getting is like you're angry about it but I feel like this has gone longer than than what it needs to and it's now time to let go of that um because it's it's in conjunction with the uh, tower card here it's it this is something that needs to be let go of um yeah in or and in, in order to move forward a lot of that negative talk not only is that negative talk about yourself that but that i feel like some of that negative talk is also has to do with you or with those who hurt you i should say and again I, i'm 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 not trying to be hurtful but that's what the cards are telling me and I don't feel like your situation is anything special. And the reason why I say this is because we've all been there at some point or another. You just happen to come to this reading during the time where, where you need to hear this, unfortunately. And maybe you don't want to hear this. Nobody wants to be told that they're being, you know, that they're, you know, bitter or angry whether it's conscious or subconscious it, it truly doesn't matter um because the point is is that it, you need to be you've come to this reading for a reason you need to be aware of what needs to be let go of in order to move forward i've either you need to make up with this person or make peace with with everything because we have the five of wands here in reverse i feel like you need to make peace with these past situations and move forward with your life but you can't move forward with your life without making peace and coming up coming to some sort of resolution as to how you're going to let go of all this negative talk. This could be something as simple as anytime a negative thought comes up, you know, dismiss it and say something positive so that it cancels it out. But in order to cancel out one negative, you have to say seven to 10 positives, right? And and, and that can definitely help you out. I would even go as far as uh, writing down journals uh, in a journal, you know, all your thoughts or even on your phone. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, pen and paper. I like pen and paper. Um, actually, I like pencil and paper. I, I There's something soothing about it for me. But if you're more, you know, uh computer or phone or electronic savvy and that's and, and that's what is uh, readily available then write it on your notes on on your phone that's perfectly fine whatever works for you do that okay but the reason why I say this is because this is how you start recognizing these these negative thoughts you might not even have a clue that you're having these negative thoughts and these thoughts are what's holding you back. You might not know that. You might not be aware of that. More frequently than not, we are not aware of our own thoughts, our own self-talk. We, we just aren't, right? And I, I'm getting the sense that that's what's actually happening. You don't really recognize that those are the thoughts that are holding you back because you don't recognize that those thoughts are being had. So, thank you, Spirit. So, uh, you can also get at a uh, spiritual store, you can get a lapis lazuli bracelet. Um, and I feel like this particular 
if you do something like this, you can, um, every time you have a negative thought, touch your bracelet. And when you touch your bracelet, or if you just want to get a, a stone, a lapis lazuli stone and have it in your pocket and touch it every time. Oh, you know, um, I, I feel like that's going to be helpful. Uh, because every time you touch it, 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 you have a thought and you touch it, it kind of puts it from your mind to the physical world and you go, Oh yeah, I, I had that thought. So now that I've had that thought, I have to think and say out loud seven to 10 positive words to cancel that negative thought out. And the more you do this, the more you become aware and the less that negative talk occurs. Not saying that it's going to be erased, unfortunately, but it will slow down. Because my dear pawn number two, you have the wheel of fortune. Change is possible. Forward movement is possible. You just have to allow for the change to occur and not be so stuck. Okay? And I mean, you have the emperor energy. You are powerful. You can actually be very assertive if you really choose to be. You, you really, really have this ability to build something beautiful, my dear pawn number two. But you're holding yourself back. In this particular deck, the emperor um, has a, it, it, it has a, uh, he has a circle behind him. It looks like a discus. And all the dis, and on the discus, it has the signs of each uh, uh, zodiac sign. And it actually reminds me of the Wheel of Fortune that is here in your reading. Because in this Wheel of Fortune, it's, again, it's, it's, it's a circle, but it has all the zodiac signs as well. And, and I find it very interesting. And I didn't really realize that until just Spirit pointed it out to me. You have the ability to do it. It's all right there. You have the world right there. You're able to dream amazing dreams, but you are keeping yourself from having those dreams because of all the talk that, all, all the down talk, all the negative talk that occurred a while ago and, and is stuck in your mind. All right, all of this is emotions. All of it, it this is all emotions. You are emotionally uh, blocked right now because of words that were said a while ago. And it's blocking your creativity, your imagination, your ability to communicate with yourself and have an honest conversation with yourself to make a clear, decisive path for yourself all because you're scared all because you're scared we have to let go of that fear my dear write down i would even recommend that you write down what your fears are what are your fears why do you have those fears what can you do to let go of those fears and why do you think those fears scare you so much what can actually be the worst outcome? What could be the best outcome? Write those down. Maybe that will assist you in moving forward, my dear pal number two. All right. I hope this reading did resonate. God bless you. I hope you do get to move forward. Have an amazing rest of your day. Good luck. Bye. Hello, pal number three. You have chosen the Amatrine stone. Uh, this stone is a union between the Amethyst and the Citrine stones. This has to do with your third chakra. This um, allows 
the uh, the balancing of the masculine and the feminine energies. And it also helps align the physical and spiritual world. It also helps you um, with mental clarity um, in concentration. And, you know, this... Spirit asked me for pile number two to look at the stone and... I did. They didn't ask that of pile number one, but they're asking me again to do this for pile number two. And I, I never, I've, I've had this stone for a long time. I never noticed on the stone that on one particular side, it's right down the middle. Well, not right down the middle, but like three quarters of the way, it's, it's, one side's completely lighter and the other side is darker. I never noticed that. And then there's a, a line in, in between that is, um, that's, it's like a definite border. And I feel like this is telling you, you need to set your boundaries with whatever is occurring. Because I, I feel like, Someone has taken over. Someone or something has taken over. And like instead of it being a complete balance, I feel like whatever situation you're in is not balanced at all. Like at all. Where you, where you give your heart completely, I feel like you have very little to give right now. Uh, that's, I, I'm just getting the sense of exhaustion. It, I, I'm getting the sense of overgiving and exhaustion. I wouldn't be surprised that we get the queen of cups. Um, but yeah, that's, let's take a look at your stones here. All right, we have the Nine of Wands, the Four of Wands in reverse, the Seven of Cups in reverse, and the Three of Cups in reverse. Yeah, something is definitely not balanced here, for sure. This might have to do with home life because we do have the Four of Wands but let's take a look at all the cards here before I even, okay. So in the nine of wands, there's a moth and it's looking backwards and, and it's honestly the face that's on the moth is, is like, seriously, I still ha I have all of this. Like, oh my gosh, I can't do anymore. I, I, I said, I, I was getting exhaustion. And that's what I'm getting here. I, I just feel like you're the one laying all the groundwork. You're the one doing everything. Or at least maybe not everything, but a good portion of it. And I'm getting the sense that with the four of wands in reverse, that you're not, you don't have the support that you want or that you need I, I, that, that's what I'm getting here because it's in reverse. I feel like you're constantly the, the backbone. You're the doer. You're the one who's constantly doing things. And I, I, I'm just getting the sense that you're absolutely exhausted. I really do. And again, I just feel either you're a single parent and you're just exhausted or you don't have a spouse that supports you or, or maybe you're overdoing it at work and you don't have um, the support at work and maybe you've mentioned it to a supervisor that you know, you're know you over, um, overworked and understaffed. You know, it, I, I don't know what your situation is. So take it how it resonates, but either way, I'm getting the sense that 
you're overworking and not that you mind doing the work, but when you ask for assistance, because I'm, I'm getting the sense that you are incredibly strong, like very, very strong. Um, ah, that's why the M. Okay, so the M train, uh, I'm entering is in regards to balancing masculine and feminine energies. And okay, that makes so much sense now because you're not balanced and, 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 and I'm getting more masculine energy than feminine energy, which again, resonated here with the, with the stone in, in the division. So if this doesn't have to do with a partner or even if it does, um, again, I just feel like you're constantly doing the burden, the masculine, uh, energy that's masculine energy. You're constantly having to do the work and the feminine energy is when, you know, you're asking for assistance is not that need is not met. All right. So that feminine energy is depleted because you're having to have to constantly, um, step up. Not to say that, a, uh, uh, a female cannot be uh, powerful. That's not what I'm saying. The, the, it, it's just the energy. It has nothing to do with male, female. It's an energy. Okay. Um, with the seven of cups here, I feel like there's a lot of missed opportunities and that's what needs to grow. The opportunities for, for more, for growth, for, for change, uh, the opportunities for anything that you want to happen it is what needs to grow. And right now you don't have those opportunities because you're so busy focused on doing everything else that you don't have time to give back to yourself. And this is opportunity to give back to yourself, opportunity to, to do something that appeases you, do something in a group setting for yourself with your friends. And, and I'm feeling that you don't really have that right now because you're so busy doing everything else. And I feel like you have to give back to yourself, but you don't have the opportunity. That's what I'm seeing here. And I just, I just feel like the opportunities for emotional support is really what's truly needed. And again, that could be encompassed by everything I mentioned, you know, time with, with friends, family, uh, other than just working and, and doing other things. Uh, because I feel like the emotional support is what's really what is required. And I feel like you're holding on. Um, you're, you're holding so much in is what I'm getting here. That it's consuming you. And I feel like you're complaining. And don't shoot the messenger. I'm sorry. I feel like you're like not not gossiping, but like just complaining to others. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I've asked for help. I've done this, I've done that. I, I, and I'm already overworked and I don't know what to do. And this, again, this could be a work situation. This could be a, um, a love life situation. I, I don't know what the situation is, but regardless, I feel like you're just complaining about it um, because that's your only outlet right now. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not judging you. Um, I, I just don't feel like you have an outlet to, to get all of this out. So that's what you're doing right now is complaining because that's all you have at the moment. Oh my gosh, my dear ones. I, I, I feel so tired for you. Let me see if we can get some clarifications. So I, I feel like right now you, you need to start creating some boundaries. Um, and those boundaries, and Spirit just told me this because they, they pointed out the boundary that I mentioned within the stone. Um, you need to create some boundaries so that you can go and, and have uh, some opportunities to release some some of the things that you're holding in whether that means you know you go to therapy or, or you have uh, some time with friends or 
you know, you, you go have a date night or you go and, and do something artistic, you know, you go and do some painting. I don't know why spirit just showed me painting. I don't, I don't know if you guys paint or, or that's something you want to do, but they're, they're showing that they're also showing me cooking, uh, like taking a cooking class, something that you want to do that's going to expand your, um, not necessarily your horizons, but expand your, your palate is really what I'm getting here. Expand your palate, expand what that looks like. You know, your, your day-to-day -day life, you, you just need to get out of the monotony is what I'm getting here. Even on the, <laughs> spirit's funny, even on the moth that I pointed out earlier, I didn't even pay attention to this. It's a black and white moth. Oh, I forget the name of this moth. Um, I'd have, I'll have to look that up. Okay, so several cards just came out. So I have to take a look at this. Um, but before I even look at those cards, um, again, I feel like it, you're, you're not balanced. You're supposed, you're meant to be balanced. You're supposed to have this beautiful balance of uh, uh, masculine and feminine energies. And right now, again, you're just out of balance. Um, right now, I, I see, look at this, we have the King of Wands, the Five of Pentacles in reverse, and the Queen of Pentacles. I want one more card, please. And, oh, wow, that was quick. The, what is this? The Four of Swords, yeah. Lord knows you need some rest to recoup, for sure. <laughs> You definitely need some rest. Um, I, I feel like it, your mental strength is what I'm seeing here with this particular four of swords um, in reverse. But let's let's go uh, to the to the first card, the King of Wands. Again, this is a very masculine energy, um, and for, forget male female, please just. Get that vocabulary out of your mind. This isn't about male or female. This is about masculine and, and feminine energy. We all have masculine and feminine energies within us. Yin and yang, it's an, a, a beautiful balance. That's what we're all made of. But in this particular instance, I feel like you have more masculine energy, the king of wands. And, and, and that, again, being in charge being decisive, being, you know, you're always having to do is, is, is what I'm getting here. Um, and, and I feel like you're just always in command that you don't have time to just rest and, and really recoup. And with the five of, I was going to say five of cups, but that's not correct. It's the five of pentacles in reverse. I feel like you need to tap into your spirituality um, because right now you're, I, I feel like you're not tapped in, but that's what needs to happen. You need to tap into your spirituality, become spiritually aware. Isn't that what the Amendrine is about? Yeah. Aligning both the physical and spiritual worlds. Again, that's, and, and here's the beautiful part. I, I love spirit. So we have the king of wands, the five of pentacles in reverse, and we have the queen of pentacles, and we have um, the four of, of swords. So the queen and king of pentacles, right? The masculine and feminine energies is divided by your spirituality, right? So what that tells me here or is it's it not that it's divided, but it's it has this five of pentacle in the middle, which tells me that in order to balance these two energies out, you have to come you have to get realigned with your spirituality, with your faith. Because right now I am getting more of this because you're so unbalanced, I'm getting the sense that you're you're frustrated. <laughs> Um, and because you're more in the governing, um, aspect, right? That masculine aspect. And 
even though you are, you are both, you, you are masculine and feminine, but you know, you, you, you need to tap into your creativity, your sensuality, your, um, your, your generosity, because you are a very generous individual, but right now you feel like you're being taken advantage of. And the reason being is because you keep asking for assistance and people keep walking over you. I'm, I'm getting the sense that you have attempted to put boundaries up and people keep walking past those boundaries. Like they just, just stomp on them is what I'm getting here. And what I'm, I'm seeing here with this queen of pentacles, uh, you need to get back into your feminine energy. And again, this comes down to, because this queen of pentacles is, um, is in conjunction with the, uh, seven of cups, right? And again, this has to do with getting out with your, your, your soul people doing things that, bring you back to your nurturing self, your creativity, uh, your creative self, your, you know, cooking, painting, and, and not cooking for the family, not that, but like, like a cooking class, something that just, that broadens your, her, not, I, I, I know I keep saying broaden your horizons, but, and, and I said that earlier, and I don't know why I'm saying that. I know I want to say broadening your palate, but I guess it is broadening your horizons. I feel like you want to see and experience more than what you're experiencing. That's what I'm getting here. And I'm, I, I feel like once you start doing things like that, things for yourself, that's when you're going to get back into your, 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 your strength again, your mental strength. Because again, I feel like you're just so exhausted like i'm that's what i'm getting like you are depleted of of your yeah you, know, you might i said the word depleted i think in pound number two and that's not a word i typically use I'm not saying i don't use it i do but i don't frequently use it within my readings so you might you might resonate with pound number two i don't know if you were if you were drawn to that pile or not but this, this really has uh, to do with the depletion of, of your energies. And I feel like you just need to take some time for yourself so that you can come back refreshed. Because that's what I'm getting. Once you go out and you do something for yourself, you come back refreshed. But right now you don't have any time for yourself. You're, you're not allowed time for yourself, you know, because you're always constantly going, doing. Th that, that kind of energy is, is what I'm getting here. Um, okay. Um, Spirit has asked me to get an oracle card. So that's what I'm going to do right now for you. Uh, but I feel like setting up boundaries for yourself. And, and, and again, I feel like you have attempted to place boundaries for yourself. And I'm going to be honest with you. Um, if you cannot place boundaries and, you know, let's say you've mentioned to somebody, say, listen, or let's say to your supervisor, you need to hire somebody. I can't do this. I, I can't continuously do this. I'm, I'm getting sick. I'm getting tired. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm I'm going to make an error. And and if they keep if they keep walking over that and 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 I I would take it a step further and say, "Listen, I need to take a personal day. I can't do this. I can't." And if I take a personal day, there's no one's going to be here. Uh, you know, or whatever that looks like for you. And honestly, I I would take a personal day if if my supervisor keeps you know, keeps doing this. And I understand that in your mind, you're probably like, well, if I take a personal day, that just means that more work is going to be stacked up for me. Here's the thing, my dear pal number three, your, 
job consists of eight hours, eight, 12, I don't know how many hours you work, eight, 10, 12 hours, depending on the kind of career that you have, right? You can only do what you are capable of doing within that time frame. If things don't get done, that's on your supervisor because you've already asked several times to please hire somebody. And I would get this in writing. I wouldn't do this verbally. Uh, I would uh, email your supervisor and say, if this is something, I'm not saying do this. I'm saying if I were you, this is something that I would do. Um, say, listen, you know, send, send them an email. That way you have it in, you know, you have proof that you've requested it. And if something gets fallen, if, if work gets fallen behind and the, um, the time that they are wanting something completed by does not happen. Say, you know what? I asked you for assistance. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. It can't fall on me because I asked for assistance. You know what I mean? Things of that nature. If this is a, a partner that, that uh, doesn't help you within your within your home life because their things are more important or whatever the reason, it really doesn't matter what the reason is. It's a crap reason um, because a, you're able to find time and so can they um, is what I'm, is what I'm getting here. So I, I would definitely, you know, say, say, listen, I need assistance with this and this and this. And if that means that you'll have to order out dinner because I can't cook because I'm going to take some time out with the girls and you know what, that's what you're, well, you're going to have to do. And please take care of the children. If you have children, I don't know whether you do or don't, you know, or, or, or leave the children with maybe a grandparent or a, uh, somebody that you trust. I, I, I don't know what that looks like. Maybe you don't have a spouse and you don't have anybody um, to lean on to do all the, all the home stuff. I, I, again, I don't know your life situation. I just want to give you as many suggestions as possible to see what that looks like to set your boundaries because your boundaries are going to be different depending on your situation. Okay. But there's a really great book out there. It's called boundaries. I forget who wrote it. I believe it's okay. Oh, one more. Okay. Um, okay. What? Oh, all right. I'm sorry. Spirit is just keep asking me to get more Oracle cards. It's and there we are. Wow. Okay. So the first card that came out was imagine. The second card was ease. Next card was is magic. Not was is. Um, imagine reads may you look beyond what can be seen ease is may it be effortless magic reads may you flow with the divine spirit is giving me a very clear message and they're telling me imagine what your life would be like without this position you have at your job without this partner, imagine what that looks like. And if you're doing everything that you can, and, and, and what it looks like without this person or this situation, if it looks the exact same, ease your way out of it. Get out of it. That's, that's what spirit is telling me because once you get out of whatever situation you're in, magic is going to happen. Something is going to fall on your lap or not on your lap, in your lap, and it's going to be better suited for you. That's what I'm seeing here in all three cards, all three cards. It's, there's a tip. And there's darkness, and then there's a, a, a very highlighted area. 
And this highlighted area is uh, indicative of the um, of your aura of uh, being enlightened, being guided. And I feel like the moment you step out, you're going to glow. Because you are going to be able to see clearly and make things happen in a very calm way. Even though you might not have a partner, you're going to see how much easier things are going to be. Not to say that you won't have the same workload, but I, I, it feels easier for whatever reason. And you're going to be able to let go of a lot of the extras that you were doing that weren't necessary. Spirit is definitely guiding you. The a mentoring has to do with the third uh, not the third eye chakra. That's not true. The crown chakra. And the chakra, the crown chakra is the I know chakra. And I want you to consider saying these words in your mind. I know that if I do blank, this will happen and fill in the blank you know, X, Y, Z will happen. I know if I do this, this will happen. I know if I do blank, then X, Y, Z will happen. Fill in those blanks for me. All right. Because it's going to be different for everybody. So for instance, I know that if I leave this job, I'm going to find a job that is better suited for me. I know if I leave my spouse that my life will be easier and a better person will come to me. I know if I'm no longer with this person, it, it might not be a spouse. It might be just, you know, a partner. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I know that if I'm not with this person, that my life is going to be easier and better things are out there waiting for me. I know that if I let go of X, Y, Z, things are going to be easier for me and things will come to me. That is what spirit, that's why spirit asked me to pull three cards that makes more sense I've never asked I, number one in pile number one and two or actually in any of my cards unless the oracle card was already included within the reading spirit has not asked me to get oracle cards they did for you and not only did they ask for one they asked for two additional ones on top of that so you are being spiritually guided because once your physical world and your spiritual world aligns, magic is going to happen. I'm, I got, I'm getting chills for you, pile number three. Magic is going to happen and you're going to go, what was I waiting for? It, this is amazing for you. I know right now you might be in a tough situation, my dear pal number three. But once you start creating opportunities to venture out and tap into your, your feminine energy, you're going to start craving that more and more. And you're going to start seeing how powerful you actually are and you're going to be able to loosen the restraints of previous situations and you're going to be able to create more defined boundaries 
as I say that, they show me the, the ease card that has a boundary on it. That's very funny. You're cheeky, my dear spirit. I love them. They're so good to me. Um, once you, once you set the, you're going to be able to set those clear boundaries and define them better. And the more you're going to do that, you're going to be able to not, not that you're going to be able to, but you're going to distinguish who you want in your life and who you don't want in your life or who you don't want in your life as frequently because you're going to be very protective of your energies once you're balanced out. That's what I'm seeing here, my dear pal number three. I hope this did resonate. Stay strong. Keep with those boundaries and, and, and try to open up those opportunities. All right, my dear ones, have an amazing rest of your day. Bye.